Hello, and welcome to this third episode of the Pharmacy Informatics Professor 2020 with your host, Armin Simonian. When I speak at local, state, and national meetings on the topic of pharmacy informatics education and pharmacy school, the most common question I get after my presentations is, if I am a student at a pharmacy school where they do not offer a required course in pharmacy informatics, how do I get that education? Or I get a question from a staff pharmacist who says, I've already graduated, I'm working as a pharmacist, but I would like to transition my career path into the area of pharmacy informatics. So how do I get there? So let me ask, answer that question today by talking about two things. Number one, I want to talk about me and my career path, how I got to be a pharmacy informaticist. And then second, I'd like to talk about you and some of the things that you can do to get to the same spot. So I'll start with my history. In pharmacy school, I worked as a pharmacy intern all four years, four years in retail, and then my last two years in acute care practice with a second job at a local hospital. After I graduated, I had considered doing a residency, but I thought I was ready to really get started working as a pharmacist. And so I got a job at a small acute care hospital. And after gaining some experience there, I went on to a second larger hospital where after a couple of years after graduation, I ended up in a supervisory position at that institution. That hospital was a 400 bed hospital. It was completely on paper. They didn't have any computer systems. Our labels were typed on a typewriter or handwritten and our profiles were all handwritten. Everything was on paper. The institution was implementing their first electronic health record and my director appointed me to be the lead person on implementing the pharmacy module of that EHR. Of course, I didn't know a lot about computer basics and so I went right back to school, took some night courses in introduction to pharmacy or introduction to computer systems in general. And then um, I studied some programming languages, also studied operating systems and telecommunications and eventually decided that I wanted to quit my job and go back and do a residency. This was six years after practicing as a pharmacist. So that's what I did and I luckily got accepted into a residency program where I was the apprentice to a pharmacist who had also a bachelor's degree in computer science and he had written the pharmacy module at a hospital and um, I was his apprentice working on that pharmacy module and implementing uh, upgrades, uh, new features. By the time I finished my residency, I went out and started looking for a job as a pharmacy informaticist. And of course, there were no positions available at that time. It was a really new area of practice for pharmacists. And so what I did was I didn't want to lose my clinical skills. So I got another full-time job as a clinical pharmacist in a smaller hospital. And at the same time, I started doing contract programming work for different institutions that were looking to write applications to make their pharmacies uh, more effective and more efficient. After doing that for a few years, I finally landed a full-time job as a pharmacy computer specialist at a 1,000 bed hospital, which was again on paper, and they wanted to implement their first pharmacy system. And so that was my goal to do that, and I was successful. And after being at that institution for about six years, I moved on to a multi-hospital organization where I became the corporate level pharmacy informaticist for a seven hospital system. So that's how I got to being a pharmacy informaticist and my work along the way that I've been doing in this area for over a couple of decades. Now let's talk about you. So I'm going to bring up a small presentation that I put together and let's talk about how you might become a pharmacy informatics specialist or pharmacy informaticist. Okay. 
I will say, become a good pharmacist first. You have to know pharmacy practice. You have to know pharmacy workflow. You have to know how prescriptions are filled in the retail setting. You have to know how orders are filled in the acute care setting. You have to know workflow, what's important, what are the needs of the pharmacist in terms of automation and information technology. If you don't know pharmacists or pharmacy practice, then you're gonna have a difficult time being an effective pharmacy informaticist. So be a pharmacist first, and then computer scientist or information technology analyst second. All right, so let's talk about these five different points. Number one is the IPI and API experiences, the introductory and advanced pharmacy practice experiences for our students in pharmacy school. Back in the day, um, we did not have IPIs, but we did have API rotations. Uh, I got most of my experience uh, working as an intern, but these days, I think our students get most of their experience through these IPI and API rotations. So when you're on rotation, students, make sure that you express to your preceptor an interest in pharmacy informatics. Whatever small projects, whatever involvement you can have during those rotations on anything related to pharmacy informatics really help you get some experience, real world knowledge on what pharmacy informaticists do. And by the time you graduate, then you can have something that you can put on your resume to say, yeah, I have some experience with pharmacy informatics. Beyond that, if you've already completed pharmacy school, you can go back and do as I did, take some extra night classes. A lot of courses are online nowadays, so you can study online uh, different topics within uh, information technology. Now, you don't have to be a programmer or computer scientist, again, to be a pharmacy informaticist, but it is important to have some of the basic knowledge of how computers work and what a database is all about and computer programming uh, logic, just so that you can interact well with the IT department when the time comes in your pharmacy informaticist position. So you can take separate courses. You can also go the formal route of maybe getting a master's degree, such as a master of science in health information technology, and that will really position you well to apply for those pharmacy informatics positions. The other thing that I did, which you could consider, is doing a PGY2 in pharmacy informatics. There are maybe a dozen and a half institutions across the country now that offer a accredited uh, PGY2 in pharmacy informatics. Some of these programs are a two-year program, so you do your first postgraduate year experience um, PGY1, and then you're automatically taken into your PGY2 in pharmacy informatics. But that is not true at all institutions. I think the majority, uh, you just have to apply separately for that PGY2. Um, based on past history, anyone who's completed a PGY2 in pharmacy informatics is almost guaranteed a job as a pharmacy informaticist because institutions are looking for those pharmacists who've had that couple of years experience, who have specialized already in pharmacy informatics, looks really good on the resume and ends up putting you in a perfect position to getting that pharmacy informaticist job after completing your residency. The next thing I'll mention is that if you are working as a pharmacist, either as an intern pharmacist or a staff pharmacist, and you are not the pharmacy informaticist, but you're interested in this area, make sure and express to your administrators, to your directors of pharmacy, that you are interested in informatics and get involved with informatics projects at your institution. So we're all using computer systems now and there are opportunities to work with your institution's pharmacy informaticist or with the IT team that's implementing electronic health records, or automated dispensing cabinets or smart pumps, whatever the project might be, express your interest, get involved so that you can start getting some real life experience with these areas of pharmacy informatics. And my final point here is luck. 
And what I mean by this is you might be in the right place at the right time to become a pharmacy informatics specialist. Now I've known of a few people who had interest in computers, who had some experience with networks, uh, social media, or had um, already gained some experience as an intern. And upon graduation, were taken right into a newly formed pharmacy informatics position or worked for a couple of years. And then eventually at that institution, again, uh, because of their interest and some prior experience, went right into a pharmacy informatics position. So always keep your eyes open, keep involved, always express your interest in pharmacy informatics and do some formal education if that's needed. And that will position you well to becoming a pharmacy informaticist. I hope this was helpful for you, me telling my story and then giving you some pointers on how to get there to becoming a pharmacy informaticist. If you like this video, go ahead and like it and uh, subscribe to my channel. That will encourage me to continue making these short videos on the area of pharmacy informatics. And I'll thank you very much. Stay safe, stay healthy, look after the health of others, and take care till next time.